You meet a store, music channel. The Delta variant and children. How concerned should parents be? You already have the tools you need to keep your child safe. Variant B.1.617.2, otherwise known as the Delta variant, has been on the radar since December of 2020. First detected in the United States in March of this year. We are all doing our best to keep up with the mask's guidance, and trying to figure out if it's okay to hang out in public spaces again, we have yet another major concern. Keeping kids safe from the latest strain of COVID-19, as they gear up to head back to school and other group activities. What can parents do to shield their children from this latest pandemic threat? While you might feel helpless, you really aren't. The tools we've used all along are the same ones that can help keep your child safe as they return to their normal routines. We share the latest development about Delta variant symptoms in children, and some sage advice for minimizing the risk of infection. Are children at risk for getting the Delta variant of COVID-19? The Delta variant has been a lot more infectious and contagious. It's much easier to transmit than the previous variants that we've seen. At this time, we don't have exact data that reflects the amount of Delta variant symptoms in children. However, reports that COVID-19 cases among children have steadily increased across the globe. On the bright side, the symptoms have mostly been mild, coughing, sneezing, runny nose, upset stomach, headache, and fatigue. While this recent strain hasn't caused a lot of severe illnesses so far, some children's hospitals have reported increasing hospitalizations due to the Delta variant. Generally speaking, children who become infected with COVID-19 have very mild symptoms if they have any at all. It's been rare to see a child get very ill from COVID-19 regardless of the strain. So far, it does not appear that the Delta strain has caused more severe illness in children even though it's highly transmittable and much more contagious. But we certainly need to keep a close watch since this situation is constantly evolving. If your child starts experiencing symptoms of COVID-19, contact their healthcare provider if they experience breathing problems or severe illness. How we can lessen the risk of infection for family members and teachers? Since the Delta variant is easier to spread, there's nothing wrong with taking extra steps to protect each other even if you have been vaccinated. In addition to COVID-19, it has seen a rise in respiratory conditions like respiratory syncytial virus and human parainfluenza viruses. There's still a need to be cautious, especially around older family members. Hopefully, those who are at a higher risk for the virus have been vaccinated. While the data tells us that the vaccines are very effective, breakthrough cases are going to occur. That's why it's important to be careful around people who have respiratory symptoms, including children. Viruses like syncytial virus and human parainfluenza viruses are certainly circulating right now among children and they're causing a lot of havoc. They're also contributing to a lot of respiratory symptoms which makes it difficult to distinguish the symptoms of the syncytial virus and human parainfluenza viruses from COVID-19. Protecting children during the new school year. The last school year was tough on everyone. Parents had to figure out how to blend their workday roles with school day demands, and kids had to adjust to not having schedules or regular interactions with friends. It was challenging all around and an experience that many would like to forget. But with the new school year fast approaching, parents might wonder how to make a safe transition back to the classroom. But we already know the answer. What we learned from last year is that there are a lot of ramifications and not all good ones when kids are not in school. However, the transition back to school has to be done in a way that decreases the transmission of this virus among children, and from children to adults, as much as we can. Vaccination plays a big part in keeping things under control. The best way to protect everybody against this virus is with vaccines. They have been approved down to 12 years of age. Also, the risks of vaccination are far outweighed by the benefits of vaccination. If a child is too young for vaccination, making sure that everyone else who can get the vaccine is vaccinated makes a lot of sense. When more people in a household are protected, it's going to be better for those around them, including teachers. In terms of new variants, if the rate of infection continues to increase and the number of vaccinations drops off, we can expect to see more variants pop up. Keep encouraging your child to do the right things. As the new school year approaches, there are concerns of parents if school is the best place for kids to be. 
parents just need to keep encouraging their children to be safe and smart since the pandemic is far from over. Parents are facing a major dilemma. They're not sure if they should send their kids back to school or keep them at home. It's complicated to measure the benefits of being in school in contrast to the risks of being in school and a new variant that affects children emerges. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends wearing masks in school. Hand washing remains very important, and it's still good to maintain social distance as much as possible. We also have to be vigilant about staying away from those who are sick. All of these preventative factors are still very critical. We already know what and how to do it. We now also have the vaccination process that helps to reduce the risks of getting infected or seriously getting sick. We need to work with our children and get them to understand the importance of continuing with health measures against COVID and its variants. If you considered this content useful, please give us a like and subscribe to Yuma to Store Music Channel for more its and recommendations on baby and child care.